Hey, this is Ryan with One Board Family and Phil Moore, who is our newest content contributor with One Board Family. How you doing, man? Doing all right. Glad to be here. Yeah, you're coming in at a great time of year because it's Halloween season. Creepy games are hitting the table. Oh, yeah. And we've got two good ones to talk about tonight. Um, we are doing a compare and contrast, not a review of two uh, games that we have during this Halloween season. First up is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Slaughterhouse, which is brought to you by Funko Games. Thank you to Funko Games for providing One Board Family with a review copy. And then we've also got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre board game from Trick or Treat Studios. Thank you to Trick or Treat Studios for providing this copy of the game for us for review. So, um, so to go into it real quick, I have played the Trick or Treat Studios game four or five times. Mm -hmm. I've played Slaughterhouse once. Yep. You've played each of them once. Each of them one time. That's yeah. right. And so we want to talk about some of the things that, the pros and cons, um, not from the should you buy this, but who's this for? Because honestly, there is something that I enjoy in both of these. Mm -hmm. I, I really like some of the aspects of this game. I really like some of the aspects of this game. And there's there's some defining lines between these two games. It's not... Absolutely. You know, uh, it's weird to have two... I can't think of another time where two IP games came out like within a It's month of remarkable. Yeah. And then yeah. when you factor in the digital release as well, you have lots of attention on this franchise. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're not familiar with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, the first movie is the best movie. So, um, but I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of a fan of the original 1974 mm -hmm. release and you not, not having watched it. Not at all. I am familiar with it from various forms of digital media, video games, electronic mm -hmm. and whatnot. But can I name a character beyond Leatherface? Mm, I don't know. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little iffy. However, again, as Ryan said, I find a lot of elements in both of these games very fun. But I agree, this is a case of who are these games for? Yeah. So why don't you give a quick overview of Slaughterhouse? What are we doing in Slaughterhouse? All right. Slaughterhouse. Uh, this is the one by Funko Games. Mm -hmm. This one, this is the one that's for me. Yeah. Um, it is the one that resonates with me as most like the digital games that I play. It is a one versus many game where you have one player running the Sawyer family and a number of different survivors or victims or whatever your chosen term may be who are trying to achieve an objective. We've got about five different scenarios that we can play through. The one that we did was to... Uh, start the car and mm -hmm. escape right yeah so we had to find a car on the property mm -hmm. get the get the keys gas and the vehicle that matched yeah uh, and so you have that objective yeah. to get just survive and get off so this game again is a one versus many which if you're not familiar simply means there is one person who is an adversarial player, and then the remaining players are going to be cooperative players. Yeah. So if you like heads-up games, this can be great. If you like cooperative games, this can also be for you. Yeah. What, what's interesting about this, there's a lot of one versus many games that are hidden movement. This is not a hidden movement. Mm -hmm. So you see exactly when you are the survivors, you see exactly where the Sawyer family members are on the board, and there's no hidden movement. There's no, like, trapping a person. It's like, ah, you landed out of my space. Um, and so I, that's, that's an interesting thing because so many one versus many games are hidden movement. Somebody's behind a screen. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I opened the box, I was like, where's the screen? <laughs> and I was like, oh. Oh, it's not that type mm -hmm. of game. So, But you do still have some of that secrecy in the form of cards yeah. in hand, the players, uh, the survivors, mm -hmm. the allies, the co-op team, not really knowing what can the Sawyer family do, what, yeah. what surprises are in store. And so this game has an excellent amount of tension to it, yeah. which... It just delighted me in my one playthrough, and I'm looking forward to yeah. more. Uh, so one of the things that ties these two games together is that they are all action point oriented. So mm -hmm. you've got action points in this game. Mm -hmm. um, the survivors have action points. The uh, Sawyer family, which is controlled by one person, mm -hmm. has action points. Uh, each of the Sawyer family members, the uh, the father, uh, the the grandpa doesn't have 
Uh, Grandpa's he, a little a little fancy yeah, in this yeah. one, but we'll talk about him yeah. a bit later on when we compare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And so, we're, but they're all action points. So you're spending these action points to move mm-hmm. to do things, um, and so you have that sense of like where is the best to spend my points. Um, so the Texas Chainsaw Massacre board game. This one's Trick or Treat Studios. This is a, their first licensed IP game. Uh, it is developed designed by Scott Rogers, uh, who also developed uh, Alien: Fate of the Nostromos, which mm-hmm. is another cooperative game this is fully co-op um yeah. everybody's working together uh to get away from leatherface and the sawyer family um i think what's interesting about uh this game is that it is very definitively set on the property of uh of the sawyer family it's very much like from even the box art uh the grungy 1970s like sepia tone style you get it all the way through, which I really, really liked. Um, it's quite nice. It feels like the it feels like the original movie. Yeah, you know. From what I can gather on this one, having not seen the movies, this one seems to call back on a lot more of the movie yeah. references. This one here, Slaughterhouse, it's solid. It's really great, but it's also just that factor of I don't know who the characters are. Yeah. I don't know much of anything about it but i know how the game works i understand the dynamic here this one it's going to go through and let you see a lot more of who are my favorite characters yeah yeah what are the abilities this one your players are unique yeah on on the one before me um everyone is is very samey when it comes to the players right it's a stand-in for the person that you are uh whereas the one by trick-or-treat studios it really, really leans into what makes each character from the, the yeah. franchise unique. Yeah, yeah. You've got players that the names of the characters that they played in the movie, mm-hmm. they look like them. Terry Wolfinger did the artwork for this game. They look like the characters in the movie. I mean, I, I it's interesting because I had watched the movie recently and then played this like within a week and I was like, man so solid Mm -hmm. like so so good um so let's start one of the things that i wanted to point out i think is the the way that each of these games handles the map so let's talk about the map um slaughterhouse yes what is the focal point for the map the focal point of the map in slaughterhouse is the house the actual residence for the sawyer family now again is this accurate to the movie I can't tell you for certain, but I can use some context clues from other forms of media. I mentioned I did a lot of the digital play. I recognize the layout of the house in this from when I was playing the gun media digital uh, digital game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So a lot of components here, I'm like, oh, they really took care and took time to design an environment where you make your way through, but it's not a straight line path. There's exactly, lots yeah. of backtracking. There's lots of, oh, where do I hide? There's a component in this game where if you're in a room and the family is not, you hide. Yeah. Which, which makes it cool. even more difficult for them to just walk in and get you. So yeah. in that way, the map is not something you can just ignore. The map is not just a vehicle. It is an it is an active um, component of yeah. the game itself. Yeah. It is something that you are using to your advantage as both the uh, the cooperative player and as your adversarial player. Yeah. Um, in Trick or Treat Studios version of the game, this uh, the the house plays about it's probably about twenty percent of the map. Um, yeah. You're really traversing the property. Um, if you if you've seen the 1974 movie, you're traversing the property and going around the property and finding the generator. Mm-hmm. You're going through the graveyard. You're going by the diner. Um, so it's all these little places, all these points that the movie uh, where definitive places that the movie takes place, mm-hmm. and you're going around to these different places and kind of going around the house um the killing room is in the back corner of this house yep. um that's where leatherface starts and leatherface basically comes barreling out of the house breaking through a door or window or what have you mm-hmm. to get to the survivors and so it, there's this sense of dread that you you recognize from the movie of leatherface just busting through the house trying to get to the survivors who are on the property um and so but the house is hands down like the point of slaughterhouse yes whereas the house plays 
a minor role um, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the board game. When we played this uh, this one, the Trick or Treat Studio version, my token never approached to the house. Yeah. I existed exact all the way around the edges of the property, kind of doing my own thing, while my more adventurous teammate here said, I'm going in. <laughs> I was I'm checking it dead. out. I was, I was just trying. Yeah, so. details. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about how each of these games handled death, because I yes. think that's one of the, not, it's not controversial at all, but I think that's, uh, that's a defining piece for a person who's saying, which game is for me? Yes. Um, so how does Slaughterhouse handle death? Slaughterhouse handles death in uh, the form of total player elimination. Now, that may be something scary to most folks. That might chase you off if you say, well, I don't want to sit down to the table, get knocked out of the game, and then have to sit there and watch my friends play. They approach it in a very clever way in that, um, and it, it kind of ties into a couple of other points mm -hmm. of differentiating differentiation between the games of this is an escalation based game. Yeah. You have one member of the family on the board at the start, that member of the family, the rules explicitly state they cannot eliminate a player yeah. on their own. They can't do it. We're contending with resources so that they can cause an escalation to bring in more members of the family and so forth. But while we have the the specter of player elimination in existence here, it is a slow burn to get there. Yeah, yeah. It's a build up, and then, as we found in our game, yeah. it can turn into an explosive disaster yeah. where you have someone who is perfectly fine one moment, and then the next moment they've been eliminated from the game. Yeah, uh, some die, some really precise die rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, not even that I I played as the Sawyer family. Not even that I had like some way to offset it. I just had crazy good die rolls. Incredible luck. Giving giving me the ability to deal whatever damage I wanted mm -hmm. to. And so eliminating a player uh, probably two minutes before the rest of the players got off the property. Right. So in the in the long run, depending on the scenario, yeah. your mileage may vary as well because we were at the position of we're ready to escape. We mm -hmm. just have to get to the vehicle and start it. And an unfortunate hit, hitchhiker appeared. Yeah, yeah. So... Depending on the scenario, things may be a bit different. We can always tackle that yeah, when we yeah. do the, the full review. But in the play that we have done, yeah, someone may be eliminated, but overall, it's not going to be a, I'm on the sidelines for a long period yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah. And let's say that you're the unfortunate player of, you get left behind. Because yeah. I could have started the car and left and left my two other players on the board to fend for themselves. They still have a chance to escape. They still yeah, have a chance yeah, to carry yeah. on, and that leads to what is a win in this game. That's true. Yeah. Do, do you win because you got off the property first? Right. Is it is it that you just survived? You know, yep. I, I think one of the taglines in the book is, um, you know, uh, where you don't play to win, you play to survive, or something right. like that. Uh, something similar. And um, yeah, just excited interjection yeah, here. Yeah. One of the best things about this is even if you're eliminated, you can have facilitated your other teammates escaping. And in my book, that's still a win. Yeah, yeah, now, again, yeah. different players, different feels, but this is a game that if you are not a fan of someone can be knocked out, someone has to sit yeah. out even for a few minutes, then you may want to be cautious on Absolutely. the pickup. Yeah. So this being a cooperative game, uh, you know, the one from Trick or Treat Studios, what you're doing is um, if you are killed by Leatherface, uh, you only have three health in this game. Mm -hmm. um, the Receiving a fourth blood token, uh, which is after you're hit, after receiving three blood tokens, you're put on the meat hooks. Mm -hmm. And so um, this game is interesting because you can come back as another character starting from the point of the van and moving back into the property. And so you actually, you're knocked out, your player's dead, mm -hmm. grab another player card, grab another uh, token, and you get right back in there. Okay. Um, so that might be good for somebody who wants to play cooperatively, who wants to work together, who wants mm -hmm. to say, hey, I got it, I'm coming back in, I, I can take care of getting that gas can that we need. And so um, that 
might be a selling point for you. Um, the way that the players lose against Leatherface and the Sawyer family is if three players die, mm -hmm. then that is the end of the game, and the game has won. And so that's how you determine if you win or lose. And an interesting fact, you can actually drive off the property in this game, in the van, and leave the other players winning by yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if you choose to, you can say, guys, I got what I need, and just a heads up, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, but what I like about it is you can only hold two items. So, you, so in a three to four player game, you need somebody to buddy up with yeah. to leave that other player. Yep. And a two player game, you can just be like, you're in the back of the property. Deuces, see I'm out. Yeah. So that's right. Um, which is interesting. It's a, it's a fun little like, guys, I'm betraying you at the end, and I'm leaving. I'm out of here. So mm -hmm. have fun with Leatherface. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That brings me to. The, the most significant character, mm -hmm. in my opinion, yeah. Leatherface. Yeah, absolutely. Both of these games handle Leatherface very totally differently. Different. Yep. Slaughterhouse introduces Leatherface as an endgame condition. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that there's an escalation that's building up over the course of yeah. the game. You proceed from the old man, or some folks may refer to him as the cook, over to introducing Grandpa to the field, mm -hmm. the hitchhiker, and then ultimately Leatherface. Yeah who is a monster when it comes to dishing out damage yeah. and eliminating players. However, in our playthrough, Leatherface never took the field. We yeah. barely got to the hitchhiker coming yeah. out. Yeah. Now, if you are a fan of, I want Leatherface in my Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. game, this one may leave you a little bit lacking. It just yeah. depends on how does the series of events play out. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in yours... Yeah, so in in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre board game, this one, Leatherface is standing there in the killing room waiting for to hear that noise of people on his property. And so he comes barreling through the house immediately, and then as the game progresses, as family tokens are drawn, because mm -hmm. essentially this is a pressure luck game versus a cat and mouse resource game, um, so you have this thing called the Horrid Bag, and I think it's worth... I think it's worth Absolutely. showing because it is a very unsettling, it is a red lined bag that looks like stitched flesh. And so you're dipping into the horrid bag every turn, yeah. taking a token out and saying what's happening. And so only when uh, tokens are drawn out of the bag do they activate, except for the gas and the, um, and the keys. And so... You have Leatherface on the board immediately, and then as the family gets released, you have Grandpa, who's a killing machine, but is stationary. Mm -hmm. You have the cook, who travels around the outside of the board, and then you have the hitchhiker, which keeps you from leaving. Yep. But the whole time, Leatherface is pursuing you and trying to cut you to bits. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the who is this game for, because I think yes. we've... we've kind of dissected some of the big differences. Yep. Um, who is this game for? So do you want to talk about Slaughterhouse? Yeah, I would say Slaughterhouse is very much going to be for the more strategically minded player. Okay. This game is full of choices, full of decisions. You can say, am I going to hide? Am I going to take the offense? You can actually stage an assault against yeah, the Sawyers yeah. where you arm up with hammers and pocket knives and say, I am going to deny you actions. Mm -hmm. Well, as the more of the family comes out onto the board, that becomes less of a, a viable prospect. Yeah. But we took an approach of divide and conquer. One person find the vehicle, one person find the parts, one person go check upstairs, that poor unfortunate person, you yeah, know, yeah. because there's only one way up, only one way down. Yeah. So well, you can go through a window. You can you go have through a window. Cards. Yes. So. so there are a lot of dynamic elements of play where you can't really predict exactly how things are going to go. We had a player dive out a window. Think, oh, I'm right next to the vehicle. The cook's inside the house. Yeah. They're not going to be able to get to me. I'm safe. Only for Ryan to put down a card that says, hey, wherever you ended your turn, here I am. Yeah, yeah. Now, that sort of unpredictability in your early plays will probably be really strong. Yeah. But then it turns into that game of, well, do they have it or not? Yeah. Am I safe or not? And there's a strong sense of tension in this game. Yeah. If you are not a fan of tension, if you are not a fan of player elimination, if you get some serious analysis paralysis, yeah. this may not be the game for you. Yeah. However, I thrive on that stuff. Yeah. 
I absolutely love those heavier elements. I think the leveling up system for the Sawyer family, how things are unlocked, it, it does a really good job of tying in people who are used to digital cat and mouse games. Yes. Um, yeah. This was the closest that I have felt in a tabletop experience to something like the same named, well, or not same named because it's not Slaughterhouse, yeah. but the recent digital release of Texas Chainsaw, yeah. or of, for those of you who may be familiar with Dead by Daylight, yeah. um, another similar thing. Someone can get eliminated, but you work together, you have lots of options, and you decide, what risks am I going to take? Yeah. And you're looking at a playing for about an hour with Slaughterhouse, yes. which I think is a good time. 45 minutes it's to an really hour, nice sweet that's spot. a really good spot. I don't want to spend, I don't want to spend two hours doing this, you know. And if we can get in two scenarios, two mm -hmm. games, that's great. And the other thing that I do want to, to emphasize with this one is there's a lot of push and pull in this one. So when I mentioned analysis paralysis, mm -hmm. it's not just what am I going to do, it's how much fuel do I want to give to the Sawyer family? Because yes. everything is based on noise. The noise turns into fear. If you can't mitigate how much noise you're making, you're going to superpower your hunters. That's right. And that can turn into a very bad time. So again, tension, stress, pressure, it's all present. And in a horror-themed game, I'm nice. here for it, man. Yeah. Um, if you are a fan of the 1974 movie, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the board game, knocks that out of the park. Yes. They, from the map, the setting, uh, even the truck that is going through, the truck that is going through the highway in front of the uh, family. Um, one of the things that I really like about this, I looked it up because I was like, is this possible? So there's a truck that comes along the highway and actually can block some of your access to go back to the van or to go from the van mm -hmm. to the property. And so it's, it's interesting because it's a little bit of a puzzle timing it to make sure that you don't you don't go the route where you're being blocked and then have to go back out and take damage. Um, but what's interesting is you can actually push, which is one of the actions, yep. you can actually push uh, a member of the Sawyer family or push uh, Leatherface into the truck knowing that it's going to hit that space mm -hmm. and the Sawyer family members die or uh, Leatherface goes back to the killing room and resets. Mm -hmm. That is hilarious and really, really yeah. fun. Um, so being able to push, like, it's like the hitchhiker is blocking your way. I'll shove you into Let's that get him truck. Out of there. Game. That's right. Um, so Terry Wolfinger did a great job of uh, conveying the sepia tone 1970s, like, horror film atmosphere with the game. Mm -hmm. Everything from the components. Um, I wish that the game came with miniatures right out the bat. Um, uh, you can purchase those separately from Trick or Treat Studios' website. I wish they were in the game, but hey, listen, I, I'm not the business owner. Um, I'm just the guy playing the games. Yep. Um, I really love this game because it ties me to the movie. Yep. It, it reminds me of certain scenes, things that I see on the property. I'm like, oh wow, that I remember that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that the artwork, even though they both have cardboard standees, yep. very small. Very cardboard standees, um, but you get Sawyer family miniatures, but big chunky standees that are identical to the to the cast of the movie original movie, and so that really I think if you are a fan of the original movie and you love pressure luck games and you like saying hey you go do this I got Leatherface let him come to me if you like that. This is a great game. Like, I really, really enjoyed my time with this. Uh, like I said, I played this about four times, four or five times already. I really enjoy my my time with this game. I've played it two, three, and four players. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's more tension with a uh, two-player game, but you're going to find that no matter what, you, you, the best way to approach this is once you get one game in, Go ahead and throw in those objective cards yes. because it actually increases the difficulty. Uh, there's some additional rule sets that you can use to make it a little more difficult. And yep. I think it's absolutely the best way to experience this game because you want that tension. You want that I barely survived feel mm -hmm. because of the style game it is. So if you like pressure luck games, if you like something with a pretty pretty easy rule set to understand yes. and like there's a rhythm to the game, um, I absolutely love Texture. 
Chainsaw Massacre, the board game from Trick or Treat Studios. So, um, so either one of these games, you're you're not going to go wrong e- with either one of these games this Halloween season. Um, I am really really excited that this franchise has two great games uh, that people can pick up and purchase right now. Um, thank you again to Trick or Treat Studios and so Funko much. Games for providing these copies for us. Um, in the show notes, you're going to be able to see. Full reviews for both of these as we release them. You can find the full reviews for these games over at OneBoardFamily.com. So, Phil, thanks for joining me for this kind of like dissection of these two games. Absolutely. All right. Until next time, we'll see you at At the the table. table.